Hey you guys, how's it going? It's Rosemary. I am going to show you a little bit behind the scenes today. Um, I realized that I was doing like tools on Tuesday and I was showing you guys a lot of different software that I use or not necessarily software, but apps, maybe things in your business that you might need to help you grow. But I did realize also that sometimes that can be super overwhelming. And so instead I'm gonna go a little bit deeper instead of wider. And I'm gonna go in depth and show you one of my very favorite tools that I've been using a lot lately in my business for all different kinds of things. Um, I think that would be a good place for me to start and give you a little bit more depth, especially if you are a spreadsheet lover like I am. So the app that I'm gonna go through really today is Airtable. And I use Airtable, I mean, I think I have 22 different teams. That's how Airtable is set up, is you can have groupings of different spreadsheets, and they're called teams. I have like 22 different teams, and I have different spreadsheets in each for different things. And so I really wanna go on here on this one um, app and just show you all the different ways that you might not think you could use a, a spreadsheet, but I'm using it, and I'm using it for clients as well as my own personal business, and it's working out really, really well. Um, and also my own family stuff, my own personal life, I'm using these spreadsheets. So I wanted to jump over and show you just one um, spreadsheet today uh, that I'm creating for a client. And if you are a social media manager or a content manager, or you are just running email campaigns for yourself, I feel like tracking and seeing what works and what doesn't is so super important because then you can plan ahead your uh, marketing strategy based on the performance of what you've already done. Um, and I feel like this is a piece that always falls on the back burner. Everyone forgets to do this um, or they don't even think about doing this. They just kind of look through their back end of their you know, uh, email marketing service, whether that's MailChimp or ConvertKit or Infusionsoft. They forget to go through and really keep track and look at the information together as a whole. You might just look at the numbers um, on the dashboard of those email marketing services and be like, oh, my average is this or, you know, but you're not really going down and analyzing what is actually the reason being behind those numbers and that data and digging in a little bit deeper. It's not enough to know the information. It's what to do with the information afterwards. So I'm going to show you that example here for a client. Um, I do run their um, content marketing division. So I am in charge of not only their social media, but all the integrated pieces of marketing for their business. And that has to do with print. That has to do with in-person events. That has to do with online advertising like Facebook ads and that has to do with email marketing and so email marketing is one piece of that big marketing puzzle but it's a piece that I really want to look forward um, move forward with and make adjustments to make it more effective because they really don't they've been in business for about 10 years and they don't have the biggest email list they only have about 1400 people on their list which is fine it's a good base but if we're going to focus on email moving forward and really spend the time doing it I want to make sure because this is a small company it is run by a very small team it's not some big corporation that has millions of dollars to spend or millions of man hours to use um, it's really just me running their marketing. So I have to make sure everything I do is maximizing the returns. And so that's why I'm really doing this. So if you are just doing this for your own business, this is a really good way to keep track of your efforts on email and see where you can make those adjustments. So I'm going to pop over to my screen share so I can show you this air table. And you can see here I have, this is one spreadsheet. So uh, air table, this spreadsheet this is one table. You can add other empty tables or copy these tables if you'd like, but these are the November and December campaigns for this one business. I have the different cells or the different columns listed here, and you can feel free to copy these for yourself or make whatever adjustments. Here I have the date of that these email campaigns went out. I have the day of the week listed here. I have the times that we sent in this column, I have what the email categories are, and I put the number because it's just showing you know how many emails per month we're sending out and the topics that they're talking about. Here I have the open rate percentage. Here I have the click rate percentage. I have notes, and so I tested a couple of different strategies like resending to the unopens for these two emails. And then I have the subject line here to see if maybe some sort of 
element of these subject lines are what is making a difference to the open rate, right? Because no matter how good your email campaign is on the inside, if nobody's opening it, they can't see all the great things you have in store. So this is kind of the first step in getting people's attention is having them open their email. You can see too on this click through rate, once they have the emails open, how is that, you know, how is that converting? What are they doing, taking the action we want them to take? So keeping track of all of these things is really important. And we've only been doing this for November and December. So we don't have a ton of data, but from here you can see that our data at the bottom, I've set this to where at the very bottom, it's showing us the average. So the average open rates to these email, when we started sending them, they were at 25%. And as we've gone and sent more consistently, the open rates have actually gone down. So people, it's showing me that people are getting used to seeing these emails from this company and might not be as um, urgent. There's not like a sense of urgency to open them because they're seeing more of them more frequently. And so based on that data, we can do something with this. We can actually send less emails or we can test out things like changing up the subject line. So I think what we're gonna do for this company we decided today, we talked about it, we're going to continue into January, still sending the same amount of emails a week, three a week, and we are gonna be testing, the one pivot we're gonna be doing is testing different subject lines. So we're going to focus on A, B, testing our subject lines. I look to see, okay, when I used emojis in the subject line, did that affect the open rates based on what the other ones were performing at? Um, and there might not be a difference, and there might be. It really just depends on your audience. There's no one size fits all to this. It's just going through the data, seeing what works. Maybe one thing that I can change around is sending them instead of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I might send Thursday, Tuesday, Saturday. That might be a better option. It really just depends on testing this information and getting the results. Time set, maybe I wanna send them in the afternoons instead of the mornings for this company's audience. Um, and then obviously sending them, getting new people on your email list is going to be really crucial too. Actually, let me go back to here. It's going to be really crucial too because when you start getting fresh blood in your email list and they're not used to seeing all of these emails from you, they might be more apt to open them up. So um, segmentation might be something we might promote too as well. So if people are in the store purchasing specific things like workshops, they're signing up for workshops or they're purchasing paint. Maybe we only send them emails about paint or workshops instead of sending everyone on the list the same email. Um, this is segmentation. It's all things that you need to try, but before you wanna try and do those really fancy things, we need to just get emails out. This client is using MailChimp. They have a paid MailChimp now because it's past the number of emails they can send in a month for free and also the amount of subscribers that's gone up. So now they're at a paid membership, or I mean a paid service for MailChimp and it's $35 a month at their price point with about 1,400 people on their list and sending out three emails a week for the month. That's just what they are paying for MailChimp. And so if that is something that you're interested in trying out, I would recommend doing it. Their audience, their target audience are women that are ages 35 to 44. That's their target range. And um, if that is not your target range and you don't think that your audience is going to be spending as much time opening emails as maybe theirs is, maybe you don't go in and spend as much time on email. Maybe you only want to send once a month or once a week, but you don't know until you try. That's the point of it. So feel free to copy the layout of that spreadsheet. I gave you all the columns. It shouldn't be too hard to replicate. And if you do have questions about this, let me know in the comments below. Talk to you guys later.